Welcome back to my dark room. This week we're going to be looking at how to treat dichroic fog on your negatives. I have some negatives. I was going through my archives, uh, some boxes and folders that I have, and I found some film from mid-2000s when I was in grad school that have some dichroic fog on them. And even though I don't intend to print these anytime soon, I really don't want them ruined. So we're going to treat the film to get rid of that dichroic fog so it doesn't get worse. Before we get going, however, I do want to thank all the people who do help support this channel. You can be a sustaining member looking at the membership tab up there on the About Me page. Or if you just want to help out one video at a time or just on a single video, get me a roll of films, so we can do a comparison or whatnot, then you can go down to the Super Thanks down there. Your contributions do help and it does get this channel moving in new directions, so it is appreciated. And thank you for those of you that do help support this channel. Dichroic fog is basically, there. there's more to it than this, but we're just gonna dumb it down a little bit. It's basically just a silver plating on the film. And it comes from typically bad processing. I know what mistakes I made. We'll talk about that after we treat this. But as long as you do good archival processing, you should be fine. You shouldn't have any of this issue. To treat it, what I'm going to be consulting is this book. It's uh, Conservation of Photographs by Kodak. It was put out a few different times in different eras showing different points of research and is going to have some formulas and tips on treating dichroic fog and of course preventing it in the first place. There are some developers that can cause it. Uh, Tmax RS developer was designed for sheet film to prevent dichroic fog. If you use the regular Tmax developer on sheet film, then you would get dichroic fog, um, or at least increase the possibility of dichroic fog. So they made a special formula that didn't do it. Now that's not my issue. I know what I did. So we're going to go ahead and get set up. We're going to clean the fog off. You'll get a better look at what it looks like here in just a moment. On the negative, you can of course look at your film and see if you have a similar issue and you didn't know what the cause or what that was, then you can see. Uh, we will, over time, as I see uh, different things in kind of my archives, if I have some processing issues, the problem that has occurred, I'll make more videos showing that problem and showing the treatment and hopefully prevention. So. I'm not going to say that this is necessarily the first video in a series, but as time goes on, if I find other things, we'll cover it in a video topic. All right, so let's go ahead and get this negative cleaned and then come back. You can see here we've got like quite a bit of this metallic sheen. That's what we're trying to clean off. That is the dichroic fog. So we're going to use our solution and I've got it here in a tray because we'll, we'll put the whole negative in in a bit, but we've got to give it some actual pressure. So I've got some cotton buds, Q-tips. I'm going to just dip it in here. And this is very simply a fixer for film and some citric acid. So it takes 15 grams of citric acid per liter of fixer. So just take your Q-tip and you are literally just going to rub off the excess silver. You can use a cotton ball as well, either way. And you can see it's coming off. So get in there and clean it. Simply soaking the negative in the fixer is not going to do it. You actually have to apply the uh, the pressure here. And you're not trying to take the emulsion off, right? You're not trying to do that. So be careful with the amount of pressure that you're putting on. I'm going to change to fresh Q-tips as I go along, making sure I'm not just 
dissolving the silver and then smearing it back on in another spot. And just get in there and work it. We will fix the entire negative again once we're done with this. Um, and that will make sure that we've got an, just an even soak so the emulsion is, you know, swelling at all the same pace. Then we will hypoclear wash, photo flow and dry, just like normal. Okay. I'm check, make sure I've at least gotten over the entire negative. I have. So now I'm just going to go through and make sure I haven't missed anything. You can see I'm still picking a bunch up. This is a large negative, small negative, I say do a Q-tip. Big negative like this, really should have used a cotton ball, but I just don't have any. I do, however, have a big giant box of Q-tips. So that's what we're gonna use. Okay, another pass. See, I mean, it's really picking up a lot of stuff. Okay, go this way, make sure we haven't missed anything. I mean, it's looking better. I'm not picking up nearly as much now. I just want to say we're almost there. I think we're just about done. We're not getting any more brown coming up. Let's go ahead and angle here. I think we got it. So at this point, let's just give it a good replacement fix. We don't need to do it the whole time. We're not actually fixing any silver out, but we just wanna make sure that we at least have the whole negative soaked through so we don't have any uneven swelling. I'm going to grab a glove because I don't uh, want to put my hands in bear fixer. It's not going to hurt me, but it's going to smell. And I don't want to smell like fixer all night because I think we're about to order pizza. And the last thing I want is fixer pizza. All right. All right. So we are in the hypo clear now. We're going to do this for a couple of minutes. We'll wash. We will photo flow, hang it up to dry. And then once it's dry, we can look and see if we have any more of that metallic sheen. Here's the result. And it worked out pretty good. So we don't have any more of that metallic. Of course, that's the base side or uh, the emulsion side. This is the base side. There wasn't any issue on this because the buildup of silver is obviously going to be on the emulsion side. So all of that plating out or whatever dichroic fog actually is. Uh, of that silver deposit is gone. And as long as you're gentle with the emulsion, shouldn't have any damage. This is FQ100, uh, and it's a pretty soft emulsion, much like FOMA. So we can see even with an emulsion like that. Now I might still have a couple spots here. I can go back and clean those again. Those might just be fingerprints. But there we are. All right, let's sum up. And you can see that the treatment worked really, really well. It wasn't hard to do. Uh, like I said, it's just taking 15 grams of citric acid, adding it to a liter of film uh, dilution of fixer, and then cleaning it off. You can't just soak the film. You're going to have to literally wipe it off with a cotton ball or a, a Q-tip cotton bud or something like that. And that will work. The brown, just keep going until you don't have any more and then you're done. 
then go through the fixer remover and wash steps just like normal. You want to go ahead and get that fixer out so you don't have other problems. Brown staining would be a fixer issue. So what caused this in my case? There are some possibilities. I don't know exactly which one. I know I can eliminate a couple or at least one. What? Well, two. Um, the developer I used at the time, so I was in grad school down in Savannah when I made that negative and a couple others that I found with the issue. The film is Efke 100. Um, it's probably all from the same box of film because I'm pretty sure I only bought one box of film. That was uh, just one box of 4x5 and I used it over a year, maybe two years, because I was shooting mostly 8x10. So it's all the same box. I was processing using Kodak D1 or ABC Pyro, and I would use a fresh mix every time. So already I've eliminated the possibility that it was the choice of developer, because I didn't get dichroic fog from anything else. I wasn't using a developer known to cause dichroic fog. Uh, another reason it could happen is if your developer has been used too much. If you overuse a developer, you risk creating dichroic fog. Well, I'm only using that developer one shot. So I would do one batch of film and then toss it out, mix up another batch. And a batch for me was typically six negatives. Uh, usually with on four by five, probably half a liter, maybe a full liter of developer, depending on the tray size. I believe it was probably a full liter. So I'd make that up and then get rid of it afterwards. So not from that most likely. It could come from bad storage conditions. In this case, they're in the same print file sleeves as all my other film, and only a few negatives have shown this. I do have another one, uh, this negative right here, which we've used before. This is the negative um, that we used for the unsharp mask. It had some spots of dichroic fog on it, and I treated it at the same time. Uh, I just did it off camera. So that negative would not have been processed in the same batch. It's from the same time period. It's from the same box. So time period being the two years I was in grad school in Savannah. Uh, but that's shot in Savannah, whereas the other one was shot... Let's see, when was that? That would have been the summer break between my two years, and I went to go visit my sister in Nevada. So they would not have been processed at the same time. So I can eliminate that like just a bad batch of developing. Um, they're also stored all in the same print file type folders, but and by that I mean um, just these four up pages. So I've got some negatives in here that had the dichroic fog and some that didn't. So not the storage. The other thing it could come from was insufficient fixing. Uh, Insufficient fixing could have been, let's see, if I did a batch of six, but not all six showed it, it could be as I was shuffling, because I would do it in the dark completely, I wouldn't turn the lights on. It could be that two sheets stuck together and one of them just did not get enough fixer. It got enough to clear, but not enough to get rid of all the silver. And therefore it started to silver out later. It wouldn't be from insufficient washing because that would be a brown stain from fixer that's remained in the negative. We don't have that issue. This is retained silver that's starting to create the dichroic fog. So in this case, I would say it's probably insufficient fixing. I may not have shuffled completely or well enough. Maybe didn't develop or uh, fix long enough. That usually wasn't an issue. At the time, I wasn't mixing my own fixer. I was using what the school provided, which would have been maybe Sprint fixer. Um, so it could be maybe if we were reusing it, it could have been just an overused batch. I don't know. That's my best guess as to why I have the fog in the first place. But by treating it today, 
I'm eliminating the possibility that it'll come back. If I see it in other negatives, I'll treat them the same. It's just, this was the worst. This was like the worst condition negative I had. So I felt like treating it now to prevent further deterioration would help because potentially this could reduce the negative, make it thinner and lose any shadow detail. I'm not having any of that, but it could. If it was really heavy fog, it could. And that's because the silver image is turning into uh, the, the fog itself. And then of course we're wiping that away. So we're actually taking away silver from the image. All right, that's it for this video. Hopefully, if, uh, hopefully you won't have this problem. But if you do, I hope that it helps you rectify the problem. <laughs> Obviously we don't want the issue in the first place. So make sure your, your frugality isn't being just cheap. Because there is a difference. Being frugal and reusing stuff because you're trying to make it last longer is great. But if you go too far, then you're just being cheap. At that point, you're going to cause problems. Um, and also, don't be lazy. And that could very well be what happened here. Maybe I just got lazy. So bad processing will come back to get you. And it does me too. Sometimes I don't realize it until after the fact. So be on your best behavior in the dark room and you won't have the problem in the first place. All right, so if you have these negatives, you see this problem, here's how you fix it. Get out there, make some new photographs, and we'll see you next time.